Greetings, friends, and welcome to Artrageous Live. We're so happy that you're here and so excited to do this art class with you today. Now, a good friend of ours, Charlie, hope you're joining us, Charlie, from Oklahoma, requested this particular style of drawing, so let's get to it. Come on over, Sophia. Yay! Woohoo! Come on down. So today we are going to be drawing glass and we're going to talk about different techniques of how to draw glass realistically and get that um, effect of a smooth surface, but also a smooth surface that is reflecting light in all kinds of directions. So. Hopefully you have this image to work along with me. Um, we put it in the comments of our post today. So you can pull that up and then, let me just grab my pencil here. So we wanna start as for all drawings with the basic shapes. And we're gonna look at what are the biggest shapes on the page. So of course, denoting where the fabric is around the vase and then drawing this vase to give us a starting point. So for this, if you're a beginner drawing, for the sake of starting, it's easiest if the shape of your page is the same proportion as the shape of your reference image. So I've gone ahead and outlined my page one-to-one -one in terms of proportion, and that's just gonna make it easier for you if you are a beginner drawing. Of course, if you're scaling it um, and you wanna draw a bigger image or a bigger drawing than your reference image, you can just say, you know, check the proportions of this and, you know, multiply it. Okay, so I'm just gonna loosely put in some of these folds in the fabric and I'm drawing with a fairly light pencil, so I'm actually using my 4H, which is the lightest pencil um, in my drawing set. And then I'm going to draw in the main shape of the vase here just paying attention that we can see this bottom um, fold in the glass on the left side, but not on the right side. And one of the tricks with a vase such as the one we're drawing is that it is symmetrical. So you do wanna take note that, you know, what is the center point? And for those beginner drawings that are, beginner drawers that are following along, you can always Draw a very light line down the middle and that will help you draw it more symmetrically on the page. So we also wanna look at the angles here. So I'm just taking note of that. And then it dips in a little bit here, comes back out again, looking at that angle up here. And then it rounds out wider at the bottom. Okay, there we go. So we have a basic shape there. And then I'm gonna draw on these other basic markers. So where is the water in the vase? Some of these folds just as guidelines and then the stopper that is over there. And then we're gonna get more into the technique of what do we do with this very fun glass object and all of the light and shadows in it. So the stopper, Again, you can draw the center line and you would draw it at an angle like that um, if you want to have some help drawing this symmetrically because it is not easy to draw things perfectly symmetrically. And just looking at that angle. And then I'm gonna mark in the tops here just to let me, my eye know where I'm going as I curve these lines around. Okay. There we go, and that is good enough for now. Okay, put in the top here. And I'm doing this all rather lightly because you want to be able to describe the, um, the main shapes and then, for instance, right here there's a highlight. So I don't want to draw this very dark because I want to keep it one of the lightest points on the page. So just drawing nice and lightly and taking note that the water lines up on the left-hand side with that background fabric, which I'm just gonna check the proportions here. Drew it a little bit low, so I'm just gonna come back in and 
clean up that shape. Here we go. And erase that first line. Okay, so now I've got that marker to tell me where I wanna put my water. And notice that it curves quite a bit down. So if I were to draw a horizontal line from corner to corner of where we see this water, you can see how much it drops down. So just keeping that in mind as you draw that line. And there's a lot of highlight going on in this top part of the water so we don't actually see a line all the way across so again i want to mark it in just to tell my eye where it where it goes but keeping it super light so that i can erase where i need to to add in those highlights down the road now glass does a lot of fun things so it, it's reflecting light down here and on the sides here so i took this photo with uh, window light coming in from this side and from this side, just so you know. And then for those of you who want to draw this maybe in pastel or in colored pencil, um, take note that down here we see a quite a significant beige color and that's reflecting from the color of the wall. Um, and of course the beige that you can see through the glass here. And then all of what's in the water here is reflecting this darker blue from the fabric below. So I'm gonna mark in this curve right here first, and then this shape as well. So it scoops up on the bottom because we're gonna have some quite dark darks there. And I'm going to divide that highlight from the base shape. And then I wanna draw in where these highlights are gonna go because I don't wanna shade into them. So it starts about, you know, third or half halfway from the bottom to the top of the water. So looking at that and dividing it in half and drawing that shape of the outline, which lines up with this curve we've already got. And then it kind of comes in like a double triangle pointing to the left and then some fun shapes in here. And now I'm gonna draw in the other main highlights, which is this shape right here, this um, vertical streak, and then this shape on the left. And I kind of see this as a seahorse. So we're gonna draw in that seahorse highlight. And this is just so we don't come in and shade them later, because it's really easy to shade over your highlight and then it's very hard to erase. So I'm gonna give us a head start by denoting where those are on the vase. Okay, and then over here, curves that way and comes up and down and doesn't quite reach the edge of the vase, but there's a little bit of a gap there. So then the other highlights are in the top rim of the vase. So next I'm gonna mark those in and we're gonna shade around them. And then there's some other highlights in here that we'll come back and look at. So when you're drawing glass, it's obviously a very smooth surface with light reflecting from both sides of the window. Um, this is reflecting from the wall and from up top. And what's interesting is that the dark darks from the ground of the still life are actually reflecting up. So that's what's giving you the dark darks in the rim and in this top part of the vase is that the light's actually bouncing back up into those surfaces up there. And the other trick is making your shading quite smooth. So I'm just gonna lay in some general grays in the areas that we didn't just sort of protect by outlining them as going to be our highlights. So I'm just adding in a first layer of shading and I'm keeping it very light because this is going to be as dark as we take some areas. And then the other areas that are quite in shadow, we are going to add more shading to as we go around the drawing. So I'm just using the side of my pencil. I'm still working with a really light pencil. 
if those of you at home don't have a drawing set of pencils where you have the different values of pencils, um, that means you're using an HB pencil. If it's just your standard school pencil, and that means you just wanna push really lightly. Whereas with a harder pencil or like your H's, um, you can push a bit more firmly and still get really nice light shading. And the H's, so this one's a 4H, but any of your H's are really gonna help you create that smooth blending for drawing glass. Okay, so now I'll point out that down here is quite a bit darker where the water is because it's reflecting this dark blue surface. One trick to see where your dark should go is to look at an image and squint your eyes and that's going to push the value. So you're gonna quickly see where your darkest darks are and where your brightest highlights are um, to give you a reference point. So I'm gonna come back in here and add more darks. So with glass, it really comes down to observation a lot of the time and you have to just see where are these oddball highlights showing up. So there's quite a significant line here that's going vertical, some quite bright lines there that aren't as bright as these main highlights, but um, it's definitely a secondary highlight. So I'm gonna mark that in so that I don't make it any darker. And I'm just gonna shade around those shapes. And then I'm also gonna mark in this bigger vertical one that crosses from the water down below up to the top of the vase up here. Vase, vase, tomato, tomato. Okay, and then there's a little bit of highlight here. And then of course the branches of the flowers. So I'm gonna mark in the branches of the flowers and I'm actually gonna mark them in quite darkly because they are darker or as dark really as this darkest blue area. Okay, so now I've got those highlighted or outlined, I should say. I'm gonna add in some shadows around it. Again, I'm using the side of my pencil just so I can blend it. And I'm gonna come in so there's quite a bit of shadow right in the middle there between the flower stem and the sort of secondary highlight there and then in between that highlight and the other secondary highlight that I pointed out earlier. Okay, and then finally, this left side of the vase. Now, if you're working on a white page, like I am here, um, we need to add some value around the vase in order to make it appear like there's a highlight separating the vase. Because if you wanna draw realistically, this actually isn't a line per se, but it's actually the, the line appears to our eye because of the contrast between this dark blue and the white of the outside of the vase. So I'm going to seemingly be drawing a line, um, but it's because I'm going to shade on this side of it to create that contrast. And as you're working, you can spend quite a lot of time on a drawing like this to make it realistic, but the purpose of that is to really continue going around and around the page in order to push the contrast. And that just means making the darks quite dark and the lights leaving them as white as you can on the page. Um, myself included and a lot of other artists will use something like a white Conte or white gouache paint, which is kind of like an ink almost, and come back in and add whites over top of a pencil drawing like this, which you are more than welcome to do and create some really nice brilliant whites when you are done your drawing. But if you have those materials and want to do that, I suggest completely finishing the pencil portion of your image first, because you don't wanna come back in and accidentally smudge the white gouache or the white Conte with your hands um, and you know take away from the brilliance that they're going to create by adding them at the end. Okay, and then while I'm at it, I'm just gonna add some shadow. So I'm just using the side of my pencil again and adding some shading 
all around the vase just to create that contrast and make it look like the edge of the vase is highlighted in white. Now, if you're working at home in charcoal, which I love to do myself, having white Conte on hand is a terrific tool. You know, if you have charcoal at home, you probably already have white Conte next to you. And that's going to come and add in those highlights. Okay. And shade that in really quickly. Okay. So then the other darks we have are in this top part of the water and I'm going to add those in and that's between you know, the stems of the flower. And this image is quite small so I'm using the tip of my pencil just to get in there or if you're drawing larger you can use the side of your pencil and that's gonna help blend it better but we're gonna use a blending stump and come back in here and smooth all of this out. Okay, so now we've got that basic shape. I'm going to add some shadow to suggest that three-dimensional form here. And add a little bit of shadow over here. And now the same thing we did with the blue fabric in the bottom of the vase. We're going to shade some... Um, of this back wall around the top. So it's not going to be as dark as this, but we want it to be dark enough again to create that contrast against the vase. So, so now it appears that this white line is separating the edge of the vase. And the same thing over here. I'm going to add that shading. Of course, if I could just magically be ambidextrous and shade it with my right hand, that would be much easier. Um, but because I can't do that, I have the handy dandy eraser to help me out. And then the top there. The super fun tool is the great eraser pen. Um, it's like a lead pencil, but with an eraser in it. Really nice for working on small drawings such as this. You can get those really nice details erased rather than having a big white eraser. Okay, and then if you have more time, of course, shading in everything around that back wall. But for the sake of time on this video, I'm not going to shade all of that. But just to give you a quick idea, I'm just going to shade right around the vase. Now, for making this appear more realistic, um, we have the great blending stump, which is just rolled up paper and you can get them in sets. They're really cheap and they are terrific for drawing glass. So if you don't have one of these, you can use your um, finger, but you're probably going to get a lot of the oils from your skin into there, which once the oil is mixed with the graphite, it makes it harder to erase it and lift it up off the page. So that's why these are really terrific. Um, and you can, it's very pointed, so of course you can get more fine details. Because one thing about drawing is that you're really just describing light on a page, and because of, you know, the way light hits different objects and they have different textures, you want to be able to describe those textures. So you're looking at what are the lights and darks, and what are the textures of the surfaces I'm drawing. And with something that's this smooth, you want to be able to create a difference in the texture of the glass compared to say the wall, which has that slightly textured um, effect on it. So how you, you know, put your marks on the page is how you define texture and for glass and water, really nice to smooth it out. And that's gonna give you that more realistic look. The other thing, about glass is that how you define the edges of anything within the glass. So it could be the edge of the vase itself or the edge of the highlights. Um, nothing is very, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not like a sharp, hard edge. So you might have a hard edge on the outside of the glass, but everything within the glass should be softened. So rather than having these harsh outlines, you actually want to 
blend in those lines that we drew in previously so that everything's kind of faded into itself and nice and soft. If you're working with charcoal or pastel, this is an effect that you can get really easily um, because you have a softer material. It's, you know, the powder blends really nicely, but with pencil, you do need to take a little extra care to make sure those lines have been blended together. And that's gonna give you that more realistic glass look. And of course, this can be applied if you're drawing glass coffee tables or anything like that. And objects with reflection can be super fun to draw. Like say you're drawing a tea kettle and you want you can see the reflection in the tea kettle of you know whatever the environment is around the tea kettle. The quality of the reflection, the lines are gonna be different than maybe the lines outside of the reflection. So just looking at, okay, what are the, are the edges soft? Are the edges of the highlights or the edges of the object really sharp? Um, that's gonna help your viewer see what you want them to see. And just as an example of that, taking a look at the flower stem within the vase versus the flower stem outside of the vase. So there's quite a bit of, um, what's the word, like fuzziness or softness to these edges compared to the stems um, not through the glass, they're quite sharp. So how you can do that is just drawing in here the stem of this flower and I'm just gonna use the side of my pencil and not go for super realistic here, but just getting the amount of contrast. So if you squint your eyes, you see this is quite a dark line against the back wall. So making that shape quite dark. And then coming down here, it softens and warps a little bit through the glass. And this becomes really apparent when we get down to where the stem actually touches and goes through the water is there's a hole right here in the stem where you actually can't see the stem and that's just the way it's reflecting on the water surface. But if you are drawing anything with glass at home, if you're following along with this, just, you know, kind of dropping your assumptions of what the image looks like and just taking a look at, okay, where does this, where does this flower stem actually sit because of the water warping it? And then there's another flower stem that comes up here. So for this, I'm using the tip of my pencil because it is sharper than the shading of the glass. And then for the parts of the stem that are in the vase, I'm gonna come back in with that blending stem and soften them a bit. And then up here. So another tip is before drawing in these flowers, I would actually shade the entire back wall of this um, on the page just to have a starting point. Now, if you are working on toned paper, so that means your paper is not perfectly white to begin with, this step is already done for you, which is why I love working on toned paper. You can get a really nice brown paper. Um, if you look at pastel paper, they come in all various colors. Basically, if your paper is not perfectly white, you can skip the step. And if your paper is white, you want to add that tone in of what the wall is. And using the side of your pencil, and I'm not doing a very precise job of this, not making it very smooth, but I just want to demonstrate what that would look like. And then you can smooth it out either with a stump or your hand or your finger. Um, and I'm not smoothing it entirely, but actually adding some added texture with the blending stump as I go by going around in these squiggles just to make the surface look different than the glass that I am want the viewer to focus on in this piece. Okay, and then you can come back in and I'm just gonna use the side of my pencil and scribble in some flowers here. And adding that other stem 
And note that up here, the stems do line up, which is different than the water down below. And now that I've got to here, I actually wanna come back and add some highlights. So I'm going to take my eraser and add in some of these whites that are up here that I've lost just from my hand going over it. And I wanna bring back some of these highlights to be brighter than what they are now. Okay. And down here is quite a bit brighter as well. And then with most glass objects, you actually have some, some sort of floating oddball reflections. It's just gonna come from uh, the environment around the glass and what it's picking up. So that's going to be like these highlights in here. So for those, you can just come back in with an eraser. Or if you do have that white Conte pencil or gouache, those are perfect examples of what you might come back in and add them on top of the surface later. Or on top of the surface of the uh, pencil drawing, that is. Okay. So now we have a very overall gray image. So I want to push some of my darks to create that contrast. So this is where I'm going to switch from my 4H to maybe an HB, 2B, or even darker, depending on which darks you wanna add in. And that's going to help it become more and more realistic. So I've got an HB right here, which is going to be much darker than a 4H. So even though it's not the darkest I can go as far as drawing pencils are concerned, it's gonna give me enough contrast that you're gonna be able to see the contrast that is possible. And I'm gonna darken up this stem quite a bit to separate it from the water. And I'm using the tip of my pencil again just to uh, create a different texture than the glass as well. And that's gonna help separate the stem from the glass according to your eye. And up here, so right here we have quite a few darks that aren't solid lines, but I'm gonna add those in. Um, kind of floating in space, so just looking at the relationship of where those lines are to the stem. So from the curve of this right here to the rim of the vase, which again has some quite dark darks in the middle here. So I'm gonna add those in. Those lines are about halfway. Okay, and then going to darken these stems coming up out here. And the left side of this is quite in shadow. So I'm gonna add that dark line and darken this one up. It's quite a bit darker as well. And now as you begin to squint at your drawing, you should be able to start separating those dark darks from the highlights and pushing that contrast. And now I can darken up these areas down here that are in water and reflecting the blue of the fabric below and pushing this. Now most, or all objects really, of course, have a cast shadow. Um, unless they're lit from underneath. But what that means is that the bottom surface of whatever you're drawing, where it touches the ground or the table or the cloth, is going to have a nice dark cast shadow. So I'm gonna darken this up quite a bit and that's going to help make the vase look like it is popping forward in space. And then you can add the dark darks of these folds in the fabric and I'm just going to mark in where those are just to give you an idea and as you go around and around just adding those darks where they need to be in contrast to the highlights. So last thing I'm going to do before we wrap up this video is just come back to the edge of this vase and show you what I mean about kind of the quality of lines to create really realistic glass.
So I would push all of this to be as dark as this area that I've just started shading closest to the vase. So this line is quite sharp, again, to suggest the edge of the glass. And then this line in here is quite soft. So I'm gonna soften this up. And what that does is it tells your eye that we're going from a hard edge and a different texture to the right of it to that glassy, smooth surface inside. Okay, so hopefully this gets you started um, working at home and following along and drawing your own glass still life and having fun with the reflection. And of course you can line up different different colored glass bottles and see how they affect each other because you can have just so much fun with glass and light. And if you are drawing a glass vase on a, say a hard surface or um, maybe a white surface and you have a cast shadow that you can see, there's actually going to be quite a bit of highlight. Say this is drawing a, casting a shadow here. You're gonna have quite a bit of highlight in the middle of the shadow and dark around the edge of the shadow. So if you're setting up your own still life at home and want to take a look at that, just take note that the shadows that glass cast on flat or hard surfaces might be different than, you know, a more solid object where the light can't penetrate through the glass. Okay, so hopefully you guys had fun. We'd love to see your art. You can share the photos of what you're working on at home on our community arts page. And Lauren? So um, if you if you want to learn how to draw anything, if you want to see any performances or anything like that, just let us know. Mention it in the comments and we will do it for you. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. See you soon. Thanks for see joining. You. See you Friday, actually, because we've got some challenges for you. Yes. See you Friday.